So we are here at the World Junior Championship and two very important personalities with me. On my right I have Chief Arbiter Hamid Majid and on the left we have Gopa Kumar. Uh, first, uh, first question to Gopa, uh, how has been your experience working with Hamid as the Chief Arbiter? It's not my, uh, means uh, as a Chief Arbiter, it's not my first time. I already worked under him in uh, Asian Youth in 2006 in New Delhi. And uh, with him, it's my third tournament because in uh, 2017 uh, at uh, Asian Youth also he is with me in. So it's uh, we are, have a tandem working together. So th there is no issue. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hamid? Uh, for you, you are working with a team of uh, Indian arbiters. How has been your experience overall? Actually, uh, I'm glad. You know, it's an excellent team. I can actually sit down and shake my legs. I don't need to do any work because all the work is done, you know. But I'm thankful that uh, Gopa is around because for the this is basically an Indian event, many Indian players, and the more pertinent Indian questions Gopa can answer. Yeah? And uh, it's better they have, I think, a foreign arbiter for events of this nature because of the numbers of uh, Indian players, quite a big number, you know. So. Uh, it's a pleasure working with Gopa. But this is not the first time you are uh, in India, like as a chief arbiter, yes? No, no, I've been to India many times, many times as chief arbiter. And uh, almost all events have been very successful, you know. Without any controversies, we just move on. You know? Right. We, we see that this tournament has 190 participants, players from so many different countries. What are the biggest challenges, according to you, you face? Uh, Maybe Gopa can answer that first because you are not just an arbiter, you also work as the as a part of an organizing team here. Yeah, the, some mainly it's a language barrier, but we are overcoming with our experience and uh, some help. So for us, we will not think it's as a uh, means totally. We can manage, uh, means uh, it's not big issues, uh, so it's not, not that much challenge. If I, if you, I think about the Delhi Open, which is uh, only th three months away, so this is not a, that much challenge if you ask me a question like this. Sure. What, what do you think is, is the biggest challenge you have faced here? Uh, challenge, uh, okay, I think you know about these uh, pairing problems. Yeah. I don't want to go. Uh, too much in detail into this issue but the fact remains it has happened uh, but uh, it has been solved quite amicably and we have to move on you know I would like to just answer the question that you asked Gopal you know the conditions here are excellent we are staying in the same hotel where we are also playing the normal administrative uh, problems you know the diet is not suitable for peculiar countries, you know. But uh, otherwise, I think, I was just mentioning to Gopa, I said, for this event, how much of money did you spend? And the conditions are excellent, you know. Yes. So overall, you think that this, uh, based on your experience, you've gone to numerous world-class events, you would consider this to be one of them? I would consider this as one of the better events. I have no complaints and I don't think the players also have any complaints, you know. Conditions are excellent. One of the things that people uh, do not really uh, see, are not able to gauge is the effort that is put in by the arbiters yes. uh, in such an event. So they are right now, I was just going around and I saw that uh, they were putting the name plates on the board which is ready over there, then you have the live games, you have so many things. Mm. So, do you think that arbiters are kind of underrated uh, <laughs> people in, in a chess environment? Actually, credit should be given to the organizers. They have made these conditions uh, viable for a good event. This is the first thing. The arbiters just come and do the day-to-day -day work. But in spite of that, you know, always there will be some kind of issues that crop up. You have last minute uh, withdrawals, uh, people get sick and uh, people are tired, you know, especially in these uh, later rounds. You can expect uh, complications. Already we have uh, a number of withdrawals. I think basically they are tired and uh, 
in as far as the arbiters are concerned, this, like I said, the Saga, it's an excellent team. I don't need to do anything. You know, we just move on. You know, they know their work. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as I, we are not a spectator sports. So if you ask a football referee or cricket umpire, the exposure they are getting is more high. But the workload, if we once, I, in World Youth also I told in one interview, the workload the arbiters are doing. Once we are come inside the tournament hall, it's seven to eight hours we are spending. And most of the arbiters not not even getting a time to sit for half an hour in the eight hours time. So, it, for us, for our health purpose, it is better because we are keep on walking. If I ask Mr. Vipinesh, he's never, I never saw him sitting in the tournament hall when ma matches are on. Yeah. So, but to express to others or public what we are doing, it's quite difficult. Sure. But to control a tournament, our all hearted effort, not only the chief or deputy, the entire team is needed to put their all hearted effort. That's that's why we are successful. Yeah, I saw that whenever there is a game that is going on for let's say seven hours, seven and a half hours, all of you stay back, you know, yes. none of you leave, which is uh, really mm. commendable. You know, Saga, you know, the, the fact remains that we cannot uh, move ahead without the last game being finished. The pairing needs to be done, the tables need to be set, all these things are there. See? And you know, take note uh, with this uh, anti-cheating commission, because of the number of cheating cases, uh, Gopa, who's responsible for this, we have to do the checking before. We have to do the checking when they are going to the toilets. We have to keep track of the number of times they are going to the toilet. And uh, so after winning the game, they will, sometimes they also scan the winners. You know, this is uh, quite necessary because it is a, a sort of a preventive measure. They know that uh, we are on online to nap them if there is any cheating going on, you know. Actually, we spend a lot of time observing uh, how the players are actually behaving, you know. Yeah, here I think uh, cheating is definitely under control because of so many uh, yes. measures being taken. Yeah, we have to take the measures and uh, from, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Regan is every day checking and giving the reports. So, all the means measures we have, anti-cheating arbiters, frisking is going on and everyone is watching our players and yes. not only anti-cheating arbiters, all the arbiters are doing it to watch for lies. Sure. Because I have both of you here, I have one question for Gopa Kumar. Is that, let's say you are the, you are right now the deputy chief, and the chief arbiter takes a specific decision <laughs> which you think is not correct or you don't agree with. What do you do in such a case? How do you uh, deal with it? Not in public. We will discuss in private, but not in public. Whatever the decision is, chief arbiter is taking. That's the final decision for the tournament. So, it, it may be wrong, but it's in any 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 game. Any game, if you take the if the linesman sees a oh, 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 not 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 an offside, but the uh, main referee gives a offside, it stands. Same way, if the chief arbiter giving a decision as a deputy or other arbiter has to just uh, take it as the decision of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whatever the discussion that we will do in pri private, if any any uh, issues is there. We will sort it out later, uh, means uh, clarify, it's not sorted out, we will clarify in private. Right. And for you, you know, the, usually before you take a decision, you take the consensus or you, you speak to all the team of your arbiters? Yes, this is correct. You know, normally I try to get some consensus, you know. I'll, I would like their opinion also. I don't want to be so autocratic to just make a decision like that. Normally I consult Gopa. For example, I will give you a good example. In the anti-cheating regulations, for example, we are or we can actually search a person in the middle of a game. You know, but uh, between me and Gopa, we discussed this matter and I said maybe uh, during the game, no. But we can always wait till after the game. Gopa immediately agreed and then we just move on, you see. But if there is a necessity, then uh, I don't think uh, we have disagreements about these major issues because we are both concerned of the well-being of the event, you know. And uh, I must add that it's been a pleasure working with all these arbiters, especially with Gopa. In fact, it has been fun 
<laughs> so so you would say that an arbiter's primary role is to be a bridge between the players and the organizers is it true or not really uh not really because uh, you know i have to work together with organizers because we have one motive and the motive is for this event to be successful you know and uh yes i think uh in terms of making the event successful if the organizer and the arbiters are not uh, coordinating there will be complications but this issue never cropped up mm. not at all okay and final question uh, to both of you would you consider this to be one of the toughest events uh, that you have offic- uh, officiated because of you know the iran israel pairing incident yes. and this do you think this was one of the toughest in your chess career till date Gopal, you want to answer? But uh, I will not say the toughest toughest event because because I have handled another events uh, tough tougher than this. And if you take outside issues, it doesn't matter for us. Yes. We have to go with the rules and regulations what is stipulated. So for us, I will not consider this as a toughest event. Okay, actually, Saga, you know, okay, you know, this Iran is real problem. it's a uh, given that both these countries are uh, inverted bracket uh not uh, allowed to play against one another some years back they they allowed for forbidden pairings yeah but uh, this regulation has been removed you know that means uh, there will not be any artificial pairing but we are chess people we are not political people so we we actually personally i tell you i am not so bothered about this because this is basically a policy problem it's not a arbitrary arbitrary problem you know but we have to follow the whatever is uh, uh, instructed to us and we just have to move on i consider this more a political problem than a chess problem you know as an arbiter i know if there is some complications in the position i would have to look at it but this is not a situation on the chess board yes. you know it's a it's it's a different problem you know because if yeah. it is happening in the over the boards we will see that it's a t- tough challenge for us if it is out of the board it's not in our control yes if it is something happening in the t- tournament hall we will feel that okay we are not uh, going to up to the mark to solve the issue but outside the tournament hall issues Yeah. you know the fact also remains that we don't want to play god you know for for events of this nature i mean it's not pleasant for example to declare a game lost because somebody is wearing a wrist watch but what can we do it's already there in the regulations and uh, we have to enforce it because if you don't already uh, enforce it from the beginning the tournament will start getting lax right you have to stick to the That's rules right, yes. and uh, well you are doing so and because of this the tournament is moving smoothly okay. ahead three more rounds to go yes. thank you so much <laughs> for your time and okay. uh, for speaking to us uh, and good luck for the end of the event thank you thanks sir